Welcome everybody. Now we have running auto package test for your package pop with Paul Gevers and Antonio Tercero. Please enjoy it. Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, this is a buff session, so we are going to have a discussion. We invited people to come from the DevCI channel. Uh, you can also add questions to the pad and we want to answer them. I, I asked yesterday on IRC and we got a few questions to start, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so uh, the first question in the pad is where can I start? How can I find a how-to for dummies? Um, so if you go to ci.tv.net, the documentation link in the header page, in the header of the page, uh, points to it points to the, the all the documentation we have for CI, and there there is a tutorial which has the initial steps, and there is also a recording from DevConf. I would say sixteen, maybe or fifteen. I don't even remember anymore. But the, the, in the last DevConf, there were a few sessions. Uh, on, on this topic, and we, we have recorded tutorials for that as well. Um, and then, I, I, if you know packages that are similar to yours, like if you are doing a Python library, so you, you might want to look at other Python libraries and, uh, and so on. Does anybody else have an input on that question? Well, what we uh, regularly see with uh, out the package tests are actually that they run the upstream uh, test suite. Um, typically, you would also do that during the build, so as a build uh, test suite. Um, but what happens uh, with quite a few of the uh, build test suites is that you uh, test them against the just built uh, code, of course, with the uh, auto package test, you want to test them against the installed uh, binaries. Uh, so that sometimes need uh, a tiny bit of work. But uh, typically, if a package already has a test suite, uh, there's a big chance that it's suitable to run at auto package test as well. Yes, for, for example, in, in for Ruby packages, we, the test runner moves the local library directory away so that it forces the test suite to load stuff from, from the installed packages. For for instance, for Python libraries, if you have a separate test directory, you can copy that to a temporary directory and then run from there to make sure that the, co the, the test code doesn't load uh, the code from the source directory loads from the install directory instead. And what would be in, uh, so um, one of the most simple things uh, to do. I mean, uh, I wouldn't call it a full auto package test, but a superficial uh, test would be just to ask for the help, then at least you know that the binary can be installed and be uh, replying with the help. I mean, it's not great and it's not much, but uh, it can catch a tiny bit. Yeah, it, it already says that the dynamic linker can load all the libraries and find the right symbols and that kind of thing. It's better than nothing, but yeah, it's, it's, it can be useful if you have nothing else. Uh, another question is, uh, for uh, each package, is it practical? Actually, I would say that nearly every package that does something, I mean, doesn't contain just data, uh, in principle should be testable. I mean, obviously, some are much easier than others, but... Uh, as I said, uh, if you can just print the version or the uh, uh, the help, then it's a start. Yeah. 
Julian, Shenzhen, do you guys have any input on that? Any impressions or thoughts that you want to share? Not exactly, because uh, for the Go packages, they are just a bad source uh, of the Go libraries. So I don't know, uh, is it, a, um, is it, uh, are we doing good for the Go libraries? I'm not sure, but, but uh, they just run the test again in for all, all the Go libraries. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think the the Go libraries they ship source only. They are only used to bind to build stuff against them. Yeah. So then to so, to run to run tests, you have to build it again. Yes, uh, not only building but also test. So, yes. The, the test included in the upstream. I'm not sure uh, if it's really good for now. What I think would be useful is if you build like a small test application that uses the installed library. Like we have in app, we have a package config, auto package test that uses package config to build a small application linking it against a package to see if package config, if our package config file is correct. And if you yeah. can compile against that. Yeah. Is, yeah is so it, I, I, I may be mistaken, but I think that uh, Lipsy is also doing something like that. Possibly. Yeah, when, when I wrote an auto package that's for, the, for a library package, that's what I did. So yeah, building a small application that links to the library and uses something from there. And it's, it's a good start already, I think. Is that an easy way to write uh, an, another test case for the package uh, while we still benefit from the auto uh, dev 8? Yeah, that's a great question. So if, if you add uh, a Debian test control file, AutoDep8 will append that to the to the results of of the auto detection. So if you say uh, test suite uh, equals auto package test dash package dash package type, and you also have a control file, then it will use both. Okay. So you, you can add an extra test beyond the one that's uh, predefining out, out of that page that that works just fine there's a tiny bit of discussion on uh, irc about uh, the um, uh, doing just the help and i was commenting there that uh, uh, auto package test uh, the control file has a restriction well, actually it should have been something else but there's a restriction to mark the test as superficial the restriction is called superficial, which means that uh, uh, care is taken uh, that the migration software knows how to judge the value of the test, which basically means that uh, your package doesn't get the um, uh, age reduction for a passing test, but it's still uh, helping. I mean, if it suddenly starts breaking, it is, there is something going on. So it's, uh, in that sense, it's a good test for uh, reverse dependencies. Yeah, let's, does, does anyone want to add anything on this topic? Or can, can we move on? I guess we can move on. So, Next question would be, is there an easy way to run tests in CMake packages? Does anyone have uh, experience with that? I don't. Yeah, so in general, uh, auto package tests should be testing the binary packages, so I'm not sure how uh, how that plays with the build system to build the source. I, I know that some test suites needs need to build the 
actual code first to then give the tests. And that can be tricky, but ideally you'd want to the test to run against whatever is installed and not against the source tree. But uh, I, I don't have any special uh, wisdom on CMake. So if anybody uh, finds it, then please uh, comment on the pad. Yeah, this reminds me of an idea that I, I already had in the past, but I never went ahead with it, which is maybe collecting uh, helper scripts in some, in some binary package that we can reuse across auto package tests. Maybe. I remember, I remember in the past someone doing something similar for auto tools, which was building only the tests and not the actual application and building the test against the installed code. I, I don't remember the details here, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's useful knowledge and we are interested in knowing about that. I think uh, after the latest uh, mini that Confpo uh, did an effort of collecting all the chips and, and discussions we had in the last few that confs and, and putting those in the wiki page. Is that on the CI wiki page or the auto package test wiki page? I think it's the CI wiki page. Yeah, so there's a lot of, of previous uh, knowledge on the topic there. And if you find uh, n new patterns, so stuff that you, you, you think is useful in other uh, packages on, other than yourself, your own package, then we, we are interested to hear, to hear about it. So please, please drop by on hash devci on IRC or debian-ci at least dot .org and we, we want to know about it so that when you have, when people you have, ask the same question we can recommend it do you have particular examples of cmake things that go wrong i mean running the build time tests we can run a build time like we normally do and then auto package is just for tests we want to run a binary time so if the package has stuff which only runs at source time on the source tree at build time then we just do that at build time I'm not sure why we need to care about doing it afterwards. Uh, so, yeah. so I I think um, had the, the tests at build time and and out the package test obviously serve uh, a different purpose, um, but that doesn't mean that they have to be the different tests. So, if the the tests that you can run at build time. Uh, uh, if you can test the the installed binaries, then that's that's great. Yeah, true. But what I mean is, the, 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 if there's, I don't know if there's a specific example of a CMake problem where, you know, those, those tests only run on the source tree and won't run on the binaries. Um, but, you know, if, if you have tests like that, you just run those at build time. And as you say, there may be well be tests in the set which can also be run on the binaries at binary time. Yeah, so I think uh, on the pad there's an answer. I think that's from uh, uh, Samuel. Uh, he's actually patching uh, uh, to apply uh, the, to to what, what does he say to make the package links against the installed library rather than the just build library. Um, right. So yeah. I mean, I have seen I, things which the testing assumes the build path, um, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it would need a bit of work, but uh, yeah, exactly. I think you sometimes you might need to argue with the build system to make it more flexible. Yeah, and uh, for instance, uh, one of my packages uh, recently, we had to uh, build a piece, and then some stuff got built in the uh, build tree that you didn't want to be there because then you would be using that instead of the installed package. So you built the test delete the thing that you didn't want and then you run against the installed package. I mean, it, it's ugly. So you always have to value if it's worth testing. But uh, if you yeah. can, uh, 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 so one of the great things of the auto package test versus the build test 
is that it can catch stuff that other packages can make you bre break your package. Yeah. Uh, so it re really for the migration stuff. And th that's really why you would like to be interested in actually running auto package tests. So if your build tests need a bit of persuasion to be run at auto package test, if they test actually your, uh, your dependencies, that's still great. Yeah, I see what you mean. Now, I guess the fact that we we discourage our path is one of the things that you know makes stuff work in either context. Quite a lot of build systems carefully stick our paths in everywhere to try and make it work in a particular way, and then we spend our time taking them back out again because that's generally wrong. Right. Uh, and I guess there's similar bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, so I've seen people do strange things with LD configs to to test in situ rather than testing context. Yeah, I'm seeing there's a lot of discussion going on in the pad about this yeah. Uh, subject. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'll shut up. I, I don't have any particular knowledge. Well, I suppose I've come across some of these things. So I guess if we have examples of stuff where <laughs> the build system makes it hard to run the tests later on the binaries because they only ever thought it was going to be run at build time. Uh, yeah, we should probably go and fix that and then beat upstream up to explain to them why that's not right. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, can we move on to the next topic? I think uh, there is a, following the order in the pad, so there is a, a script that Michael Bank wrote after the last MinDevConf which is called dd auto package test, which is a helper script to run auto package test on porter boxes and on local SGH route. So that's something useful that people might want to look at. So maybe you, you sometimes you have regressions on hardware you not you don't have. So it's useful to have a way of running auto package tests on porter boxes. As, as you know, we can. We can't do anything we want on ported boxes, so there is some workarounds you need to be able to uh, install the test dependencies in the, into the CH routes in a way that's not by hand. So this script that Michael wrote uh, can probably help with that. So it, it's on Salsa. The link is on the on the pad. So. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, reminds me. There's actually still a merge request open on that to uh, make that script a tiny bit easier to use, right? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I haven't checked. We should it. probably follow up on that as well. Yeah, yeah. So next question is there? So that relates to the. Michael's script. Is there something similar for normal normal packages to start? Similar as for ported boxes also, but for normal architecture, I assume x86, 64 bits. Uh, so someone commented in the bottom saying that we, we do have a x86 ported box. And yeah, I, I think if, if you are running on your own machine, then y you can just run out of package test itself. Maybe that if it's a small package that doesn't have a huge dependency tree, you can just install the package and get the dependencies in a, your main system. Otherwise, you can use the LXC runner, which is the same thing we use for CI. Or you can also use uh, KVM. And you can run the test directly on your host system. Uh, when I'm developing, I usually do that, unless it's something that requires a bunch of packages that I don't have, I don't want on my system. Is there any easy way to set up uh, something similar to uh, ci dot dev dot net? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, for example, the the. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, using the LXC for environment. 
So I want to set up LXC virtual uh, EMV in my on my laptop. So is there anything special uh, uh, accepting for installing the normal LXC? Yes, you can install the FCI itself. So it's available in the archive. You can install, just install the FCI and run the FCI setup. And it, it will do the exact same thing that's running the infrastructure. It's currently not in testing though. It is not, yeah. There was some some issues in the middle, but we, we can get that fixed. The, the, it, that's actually documented in the tutorial on the website so you just install the fci and run the fci setup and it will create a container and configure everything in the way that the exact same is it's the very same code that runs in the infrastructure so you, you get exactly what we have on the service Next question, when is ci.dev.net going to start supporting isolation machine? Uh, how can one help with providing isolation machine support? So uh, we need working dev CI just to write the glue code that creates the, the VM images and runs them. I think, uh, I think that code is even already there, and we just need to find some time to to find a uh, worker node that can actually do nested virtualization. Yeah, I'm hoping that after that conf is over, I'll have more time to look back at this. But if you want to help, come by IRC and talk to us. We can. We can invest, investigate that together. I think we are really close. I, I remember getting the, the code part ready, and we, we, we just need hosts that actually support nested virtualization so that it's not dreadfully slow. Yeah, because I think that uh, Martin once proposed to uh, create the hosts on the fly and SSH into them, right? That was, I think, what he proposed for AWS. Yeah, we can do that. I'm, yeah. But that, then, then we're probably vendor locked into the AWS uh, uh, calls, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we need to investigate how to do that in a way that we don't get locked in. But would, we, we would can the do that uh, again. would the ARM workers already be better supporting that than the AMD workers that we currently have? Uh, I have no idea. I, I because think... basically, if we if if we go to, for uh, isolation machine support, we actually need it on all the workers of one architecture. Yeah. Do Do so... you think we want to move to it or add it as an option? Well, the, the, if we if we do that, we have to think of how to do it because basically, if there's a test that requires isolation machine. We don't want to run it half of the time on a worker that doesn't have uh, isolation machine support because then a test can become flaky just because sometimes it runs an isolation machine and runs all the tests and sometimes it's on a machine which doesn't have it and then you run a subset. So that would be bad. So I think really either we uh, need all the workers to support it or none, or we need a clever way at the uh, DevCI master worker, a way to schedule the, the task at the right worker, which I think currently we have nothing in place for to be able to do that. Yeah. So then the master would need to know the, con the, the, the restrictions of the test, which currently it doesn't care about. So I think you need uh, quite a bit of changes to do a sort of uh, uh, in-between kind of uh, setup. Right. So maybe it's easier to just migrate everything and make sure it works and just use the isolation machine. At, at, least, at least per architecture. I mean, obviously, you can have one architecture that does have it and the other one doesn't. 
but not half of the workers. Right, makes sense. Unless we really do that properly. Yeah, if we need, we can spend some of that Debian money. That's, that's there to be Sure, spent. I think it's mostly uh, time of developers that want yeah. to design the thing, right? Yeah, but yeah, that's my point. If if it's it's probably easier to just spend money and get the infrastructure that can run the stuff, then we adding code to support conditionally running uh, the package that need isolation machine only on VMs and then routing the, the package to the right worker. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. But is it always the same person that's asking or? Uh... I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't check. So, Paul, I think you can take the next question. Yeah, I uh, found a question uh, slightly higher up, uh, which already has a, a answer. So I'll quickly do that. Is there a location in policy for test only binaries, which need to be in the binary package if we're gonna going to run them without the package test? So um, one answer already there is so test binaries aren't generally useful, but so a part of the point that I wanted to make there uh, is that um, the stuff that you need to run a test can just be in the source because the full source tree of your bin uh, of your the source package is unpacked and available for the auto package test. So, um, and if you need a uh, an executable as a binary, then you can just build it. I mean, uh, you can build a, a, a test binary and then run that. Um, so I don't think you need uh, test only binary packages if that's what's meant there. And obviously, if it's just in your source, it can be anywhere in your source. I think some of the GNOME packages have uh, test binaries. I, I, rem I remember Simon mentioning, mentioning this. And uh, actually, uh, I, I, um, two days ago, I was attending the Linux Plumbers uh, conference, micro conference on testing and, and fuzzing. And there is someone working on a proposal to extend the, the FHS with uh, test related uh, location. So it would be something like user test bin or user local test bin or slash opt slash test slash bin. So uh, I think this is going to show up at some point. Right. I'm so, trying to follow that. What I see is that we have user lib exec install tests, right? install dash test where there's stuff like RT kit in there. Yeah, that's that's the place where GNOME puts this stuff, I think. And uh, yes, I have seen a couple of uh, binary packages. I think that's mostly for uh, data. Um, but it, uh, I guess I've also seen issues with that because uh, uh, actually, those binary packages then were built from a different source package. And then uh, in the way that we normally want it, it's tricky to keep the restrictions, uh, the, the dependency, the version dependencies correct, such that uh, you actually match the version of one source to the version of the other source and stuff like that. So um, I think in that sense, it makes more sense typically, of course, except if it's huge or something, to have the uh, data in the same source. Right. But, yeah, yeah I, I see your point. Because we, we don't have a way of specifying. And obviously, in the past, we've. No, go ahead. Yeah, so obviously, in the past, uh, the, the trivial answer to that was just to to use a, a data source somewhere on the internet. But with our um, desire to be more self-contained and uh, at least 
be able to not run tasks that tests that need the internet, that's sort of a, a more annoying thing to do. Yeah, I, I was going to say that we can't use uh, the same mechanism that we use in, in the Debian control file to say this binary depends on this other binary which this, with the same version. So we can make like a, a program depend on the corresponding library that comes from the same source package and we can specify the exact version. With, I think it's, uh, it's binary version, source version. I, I was confused, then, but you can do that in Debian control because the package expands that. But I, I don't think you can use the same in Debian test control. So you, you, yeah, you could be running the test binaries from a different version of the package, right? Yeah, but if it's from the same source package, then at least for Brittany, that's okay because we typically ask for sets on the source package level. But it well, has, so I, I've seen this problem where there was actually a source package introduced to only contain the data because it need much less updating. So it reduced the size of the source, uh, the source of the source, uh, the source tarball. But yeah, I, I don't think there's an, a, a one fits all answer to this. Uh, so it all depends on the circumstances. Yeah. So we, we have another question here following the order in the pad line 58. I think you, you can take this one. So the question is what's, what's considered superficial? Some concrete examples would help. Running the program with dash dash help, certainly, but what about building an application using an installed library, for, exa for example? Should I declare that superficial? There are a few answers already there, but I guess you can answer as well. Um, well, I get uh, yeah. Building an application, if if the 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 well, just building the application, I think is is still a bit simple, but building the uh, an application using an installed library and actually uh, let it do something with the library, I, that's not superficial. I mean, uh, if you have the library doing operations on uh, graphics and you build your test application and you do an operation that you want to happen to test actually that your API score works, I, th I think that's enough to not be superficial. Um, so yeah, it, it 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 currently at the release team we uh, we're really at the level where we say well I just uh, this this help is is too little uh, testing that uh, package installed is is really uh, not where auto package tests are meant for so we 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 don't want to have a, a bin true command but. Remotely more than help is is probably okay, except of course if if uh, LibreOffice would just uh, do LibreOffice minus minus help, that would like really be far off. But yeah, it it, it so it depends. Uh, it's it's not so straightforward. Yes, yeah, so, so far we are trusting the judgment of maintainers. Yes, that that for sure. <laughs> And nobody cares except for the release team at this moment, I guess. Yeah, but, but I think every time we find we find some bug bogus test, we do report bugs. Yeah. Yeah. And just having been through uh, as your test, that's uh, 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 RC. So don't do that. Yeah, next question. How would you test uh, GUI packages? Yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, auto package tests run that uh, xvfb hyphen run. Uh, I've never tried it myself, but uh, that's uh, apparently that happens quite a lot. Um, another thing that uh, GNOME, I think, is uh, uh, doing in its own tests is actually using the access uh, the, the accessibility bus 
to uh, test. And that has the great additional feature that you're testing accessibility of your GUI. Um, there's a couple of examples already on the pad. It says BombBomb Bomb is a nice example and it's calling xdo2. Never heard of that, but maybe great. Dogtail can also be used. And apparently yeah, QT packages even have integrated support. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Next question, what about standard test suite beside auto package tests? For example, Debian test CMake full would try to create and run a simple CMake lists.txt to check for the package versions listed in full. Or Debian test package config full would try it would try that package config dash dash leads or dash dash C flags work I, I wonder wouldn't it be worth uh, trying uh, adding this kind of logic to uh, auto debate probably yes yeah so uh, Pino is saying he's using this quite a lot uh, which basically means if there's a pattern it probably uh, should uh, land in auto debate yes yes yeah yes so auto debate to generate the the control file and then this the code that handles this needs to be in some other package. But yes, if if people find common patterns that repeat across packages, we want to know about them. We we want to to centralize the implementation. So that that that's why the auto page exists. So we we have a centralized control file generator for Ruby, Perl, Python, GKMS, R, Go, uh, and a few others that I don't remember right now, but that, that's the idea. We, we should have common yeah, uh, uh, test infrastructure and add support for those types of packages to uh, out of that page. And actually it doesn't uh, contain the code, uh, regularly doesn't contain the code, it just knows what to uh, to to call. So quite a few of these languages actually have their own package that knows how to run the test for the language. But auto dep 8 that knows that this package exists and uh, can call it. And this is integrated with the auto uh, package test. Yes, we, we, we don't want to control the actual test runners. We want the, the, the corresponding teams to own them. So auto dep 8 is just the glue that tells uh, auto package tests, how to run tests for that package without uh, maintainers have to duplicate the same con test control file in a thousand packages. I love the next question, uh, Antonio. Yes. Um, how can we help in development or otherwise? Yes. Um, yeah, so there is DevCI development needed. There is auto package test development needed. There's even uh, a WNPP bug open for that. Yes, uh, auto package test is still request for help, right? Yeah, we, we, we need, so auto package test is Python and DevCI is Ruby. So we, we need people who wants to help with that, but we also need uh, help to maintain the system. So maintaining the infrastructure, we have uh, all the infrastructure automated with Chef, which will be migrated to a similar tool in the future, but it's using Chef at the moment. And you can, for instance, uh, uh, bring up a couple of VMs and have a copy of the infrastructure locally that you can play with. And yeah, the, I think come by IRC or mailing list and talk to us. And I think I, I, I'm planning on organizing um, some better way of getting people to help, like may, maybe uh, periodic meetings, maybe some other way of mobilizing people to, 
to know how can they help. Yeah, and I think I, we should have a, a regular meeting uh, live like this one, maybe. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, a lot more practical these days, so I think we should do it, yes. I I see in the IC backlog there are many workers died in uh, frequently. So um, maybe we, we can try to move the worker to the cloud or I, I think the uh want to get something like cloud in the in the for their test. Or maybe we can also move to the worker to some uh like the uh, salsa CI, they say, uh, providing a VM and uh, run the test and throw the VM away. So there will no, uh, the, the uh, worker will not, not die because you, every time you provide a new one. Yeah, we, we, we can look into that. that that's what, what was Paul was talking earlier about, which is using some API to create VMs, then run tests and throw them away. Yeah, auto package test supports that. We just need to find a way that don't lock us into AWS or any other provider for that matter. Now we also run on packet and now with uh, UI. So that's already yeah. three and then we have uh, yeah, uh, fair enough. the one at IBM, I guess, without... Uh, <laughs> so we already have four that we would need to support. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, next question. I have seen cross arch auto package test patches fly around as you, as example on the HESPI2 HDK package. Possibly useful to document and factorize. I think there's a merge request from uh, Ubuntu uh, to help support that actually. Yes, there's the the auto the cross test support for auto package test itself. Yeah, merge request sixty nine. Right. Well, this is this is one of the things uh, where it's clear, I guess, that uh, we can help. So, so there's quite a few people that provide merge requests, but. Um, for nearly for a lot of the areas that auto package test actually has code for i feel very uncomfortable to actually merge because it it's stuff that i don't know how to do or test i mean uh, so basically there are now a couple of people that i just trust and i hit merge without even knowing what the patch is really doing uh i mean I've, uh, we we got a couple of patches from from Simon, and I just say please just push if you do that thing. There's a couple of more people that are actually working, and I think uh, so. Either uh, these requests, the people know what they're doing, and that should just be also told. And if it's if they if they want discussion, they should state that and say, well, uh, this is something that. I think makes sense, but I'm not sure. And the problem with the whole uh, code of auto package test is that uh, it was written and, and long maintained by, by other people. Uh, so it was Ian and, and Martin that did a lot of the stuff. And now they are not so much involved. So it's um, mostly Antonio and me. But a lot of their, I, I just don't know how to judge. So it, it's very difficult to hit the merge button because I don't know what it does. So if people chim in and, and comment and help review the code or just say, well, I like this thing or I don't, or um, that's already a great way, I guess. Maybe stuff the merge requests that have a popular demand, make it easier. I don't know. I'm not sure if it makes it easier that we run in, like since, well, almost a year now in Ubuntu. Like the patching question, across right. testing. Yeah, so I guess we should just 
hit the merge button, but maybe somebody actually, uh, so I was hoping that Ian would sort of say, well, just give me access and I'll commit the pieces that need to, or, or mm -hmm. you, or I don't know. Yeah, we, 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 we need to uh, review that list of open mesh requests and, and do something about them, not let them there forever. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always hoping that somebody else, uh, which I trust, actually comments on stuff before I have to hit the merge button, <laughs> which is a weird thing to do when, uh, if you think about it that way. Yeah, but then we, we can't wait forever, right? Uh, nope. we, we did this in the, in the recent past where we merged something that looked okay, but then it broke something. Yep. And then we, we just go and revert it. Nobody dies from that. No, that's that's true. Uh, so we should probably go to uh, um, uh, but what was that uh, publish fast, publish often, or something? Yeah, that's true. Just merge it daily into production. Hmm? Just merge the master branch daily into the production machine. Yeah, well, currently on on CI we have the uh, the, the 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 policy of uh, eat your own dog food, so it's uh, we're we're running the the Debian packages. Okay. We we run them from unstable instable though, so. Uh, so thanks a lot, everybody. It has been a great bug, and see you in the next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.